continues to heat up our towns. It's letting up a little bit today, but as the summer sun continues to heat up our towns with its solar power, power we are exploring the idea of our soul power or our solar power. So our soul power within us. That's what we're going to talk about this morning. And I love Ernest Holmes' definition of power in the glossary of the Science of Mind textbook. The energy, power is the energy by everything how it lives. So Ernest Holmes writes, the energy by which everything lives. That's the power. And it is this energy that I want us to tap into this week and into August. We're going to be talking about that divine power within us. The energy that is found deep within our soul, because we all have that. So the question this morning is, are you living by that power, the power within, or are you living by force? Are you living by force? And this question, of course, was inspired by David, David Hawkins' book, Power Versus Force. I just got the title of it. I'm not going into his book. But there is such a power within each and every one of us, if we yet but turn within and trust it. Allow it to unfold, as we're going to talk about this morning, in our lives without trying to force our will, our way of doing things. So I'll begin with an experience that I had. Because like, you know, I wrote this talk earlier in the week, and I'm like, what personal example am I going to give? And then, oh, be careful what you ask the universe, yeah. okay? <laughs> because I got an example I, I didn't realize until yesterday. So I have this small leak in my roof <laughs> that a few people know about. And I have a dripping in between the siding and the wall of both sides of the house. So the stripping, you know, has been going on and it's been driving me crazy because I don't know what it is. <coughs> but it's, it's, it was a dripping, so it really didn't sound like a major repair, <coughs> right? So I've had the gutter people out and trying to like do it like, you know, without spending a fortune. So I had the gutter people out and he was out there six hours and they're, they're doing all this stuff. I don't know what they're doing, but they're, you know, they were fixing up the gutters. I even had Joe Martelli up on the roof. Looks fine to me, he says, but he, he did see where, you know, there's water coming in at one. That's another, that's another one. But so this Friday, the dripping is occurring, and I ignore it because, you know, I'm getting used to it, even though I know I'm going to get it fixed. So I'm brushing my teeth and getting ready to go out. And I sit down, because I have a little makeup place there, and I'm, you know, getting ready to go out, and I hear what sounds like a waterfall. So now I start to freak out. Now I'm freaking out, <coughs> freaking out, okay? This is like not in the alignment with anything. It sounds like a waterfall in my bathroom wall. And it's, it's uh, yeah, it's in the bathroom wall. So I, I go outside, I'm outside looking and pushing the siding in, and I do see in my my um, freaking out mind that, oh, it looks like there's water against the, uh, the uh, what is it, vinyl. It looks like there's water. Oh, it's, it's like the, the whole house is falling down. I go up into the attic. I've never been in my attic. I've been there three months. I never went, it's very large. But I never went up into the attic before. It's not even finished. But I'm up there looking, do I see where this water is coming from? And so now I'm, I'm jumping into action. This is all force. I'm jumping. See if you see the spiritual lesson that I got in this. So now I send a big, long text to my realtor. Like I'm freaking out. I send this big, long text, you know, and then I thought, well, the house is falling down. God, you know, it sounded like, you know, the wood is going to rot on the sides of the house. So I text my friend who's a lawyer. Do I have any recourse here? What do I do? I just bought this house. You know what? I just said, ugh. Man, that kind of freaked <coughs> me out. U-G-H. Yeah, like, <laughs> holy mackerel. Oh my god. So now I'm sitting there and I'm going through. So I'm freaking out. Like my head and my face is getting red, so I know my blood pressure is going up. 
this is the, all this stuff is going on in, in my, my brain. So I look through my phone at who can I call? You know what I mean? Who can I call? I finally call the roofer who I've been putting off. And he's on his way to Wildwood, so he can't come. So I, I don't have a roofer. He's going to come next week. So I'll give you the, uh, the uh, upshot of this whole thing in, in a week or two. But So now I'm freaking out even more. Right, because I'm not going to last the weekend because the house is falling down. So I go through the, the contacts in my, my phone and I'm going scrolling through, and everyone I'm calling is not home. No one's home. I didn't call Joe because she won the roof already, Joe. So I, I didn't want to call Joe. So I see, ah, I'm in the peas. So I call Patty. I don't call her, I text her. So I'm texting Patty. I'm freaking out. There's waterfalls in my my walls. Just know, just do prayer, do something, you know, let me know that you're doing prayer. And I don't hear back from her, but it, that's fine because then I go into prayer and I'm just praying that some kind of miracle um, will take place and the, at least the waterfall part would stop. The dripping I, I can know is minor. So I go into prayer and I'm a little bit more relieved. So I take a couple of deep breaths because now I gotta let go. What am I gonna do? Continue to freak out and my face is getting red and I'm, I'm like, no, I can't do this yet. So I'm still obsessive about this, so I go listen to the wall again. I go into the bathroom and I listen to the wall again. Maybe the waterfall stuff and it's just back to the dripping, right? Because I've been in and out of the bathroom now many times, okay? And as I'm leaving, it's still, it's still, it's still there, the waterfall. And as I'm leaving, I look down at my, kit, at my uh, bathroom sink, and the faucet's slightly running, and it's making this noise, and it's, it's reverberating into the wall, and it sounds like a waterfall. <laughs> and I'm like, I push that down, and the waterfall stopped. <laughs> so the dripping's still going, but the waterfall stopped. <laughs> and this was such an amazing lesson to me, because now I got myself all worked up, and I calmed down and I realized that the power of God was handling everything. And I text Patty back and I say, the waterfall stopped, so that's good. You know, miracles took place. And she said, I've been in prayer the whole time. So she was praying. And I want to tell you, I was in and out of that bathroom many times. And I, I mean, the, what, it didn't look like a drift but the noise. It was amazing. So what I got from this is, I really got to trust in the, in the power of God and trust that the law is always working. No exceptions. No exceptions. And the interesting thing about this whole little lesson that I know the universe gave me to, to learn, I know it, was that when I came home that night, I kept trying all different ways to put the faucet on that because it didn't make sense. And I couldn't get that noise. I mean, I, there, I could hear dripping coming out of the water, but I, that wasn't happening before. I couldn't get that same waterfall noise back. So I'm, I'm totally convinced it was a lesson for me to learn, to let go, to, and stop going into my head with these dramas. My house is falling down. I mean, I was convinced that, that, that I wouldn't have a house by Monday. The walls were rotting. The wood was crumbling. The whole thing was falling down. This is what we do. This is what we do. So this was a great lesson and a really good experience. Wow, is all I can say. We get ourselves worked up, do we not? About these experiences that mainly we go into our head and make them like 100 million times bigger than they really are, than they really are. So by trusting and knowing that there is a power and that I don't have to force because that's what I was doing, forcing. You have to text everyone, I gotta fix it. You know, when you have to go into that mode of, well, you're in panic, so you're going into that mode of fixing, then you're forcing. And force blocks the good of God. It blocks the good of God. So, do you see the spiritual implication here? Do you? Mm -hmm. No, okay, good. <laughs> because this is just one small instance in our lives. And that we do tend to make them larger than they really are. So 
I want you to repeat this after me. If I work with the law, the law works with me. If I work with the law, the law works with me. And that, my friends, is where power is. The power is in the law. And the law of God is infallible. So that's where our trust and our faith lies. In the law. Because the law, remember, is the doer. It doesn't judge. It just, you're just you going to feel panic and fear and you're freaking out. Well, guess what? You get back more of that. Mm -hmm. You get back mm -hmm. more. So then you got to say, whoa, let me take a breath. Always that breath. Let me take a breath here. Let me get treatment. Whoa. You know, let me do prayer and let the power of God that's within me and within everyone do the work. Emmett Fox, a well-known New Thought author once spoke about spiritual sunbathing, and I like this. What he says applies here. He said, we need to learn to relax spiritually as well as physically. We easily forget that it is the power of God that solves our problems. Listen to this. This is so real and not our own efforts in the making of our prayers. Spiritual sunbathing offers an excellent analogy here. In sunbathing, you expose the skin to solar rays and then relax and leave it to the sun to do the rest. You never think of trying to help the sun. You never think of that. You relax, he says, quietly and have perfect faith that the sun will do its work. In meditating on the presence of God, the same quiet, relaxed, confident attitude will bring the same inevitable results. Because the law works for everyone the same. Right? The sun is always shining. Today, there's tons of clouds out there, and it looks well, it's not a sunny day. But if you go up in a plane, what do you see? The sun. The sun is always shining. So the power of God, the law of God, is always operating. It doesn't take a break. Nothing can cloud it up. That's, that's for us to really deepen into, because we consciously create. There is no force to make the sun come out. It doesn't. There's no force to allow the law, the law of cause and effect, to operate. It is always in operation. So for us, it's simply allowing the power within to do its work. But we have to consciously remember to go within and to know that there is a power for good. For good. That's for us. That's for, and everything works out. It always does. The problems that we have that are insurmountable, that are huge problems of, we're never going to fix it. We let go, and we let God truly, and go within, and know that there is a power for good that's operating for me now. What am I putting into the law? Reading Troward, who I'm going to quote in our Roots class, the S made me very cognizant of the law, because that's what he, that's the glue, the, the real meat of Ernest Holmes' work is in that law, and Troit is, is an expert. He really gives us a, an incredible richness on how it works. So now I'm thinking, whoa, what am I putting into the law? Because it's coming back. You know, some of us say the universe, which is fine. Still, it's that law that does whatever is put into it, it brings it back. But that judgment is intelligent, it's brilliant. Jesus, the master teacher, clearly taught that spiritual power works through us at the level of our belief. How do we believe? How deeply do we believe that there is a power for good? And he implied that it was done unto us by an impersonal principle. This is what he implied, which we call the law. And it works quickly for one as it does for another. No one left out. The law is no respecter of persons. It doesn't judge. It's no respecter of persons. It works alike for each and every person. And Ernest Holmes wrote in his Science of Mind textbook, the law is absolute, and we should trust its impersonal action implicitly. 
It can do anything for us that we can conceive of doing. So if we can conceive it, we can achieve it, right? But do we believe it? Throw that caveat into it. Do we really believe it? That's the thing that we're deepening. That's the thing that we're expanding, is our belief and faith and trust in this power for good. All is well. I know someone who that's their affirmation, and it's a great affirmation. All is well. So when you start going into those panic modes, all is well, all is well, until you get to that place of peace. The power is always available to us equally. But sadly, we don't use it productively or consciously as often as we could. And we just deal on, in the realm of effects. All of us, because that's the way we've been programmed. No one told us that there was a power for good, did they? Anyone tell you that? Yeah. There's a power for good, but we must use it. And we're not really conscious sometimes of our thinking, our thoughts, and our thoughts are creating. Just as I wasn't conscious of how I was really in the beginning <laughs> until I couldn't call anyone else, and I had to succumb, I wasn't conscious that I was like freaking out. Well, I knew I was freaking out. But, you know, call, oh, I gotta fix it, I gotta fix it. Let me call every single human being. I'm ready to do a lawsuit, which I don't even do. I mean, that's how insane the mind is. The thoughts when we don't rein them in and say, whoa, uncle, you know, spirit, take over because I totally cannot do this. So thank goodness I had Patty there for prayer. And I myself then just relax. And that's part of the prayer. Because all of a sudden, you know, there's no one else to call. <laughs> so I'm sitting there, I called God. God, work a miracle here. <laughs> That was a miracle. Because I'm telling you, that faucet was not running. So most of us are on automatic pilot and we react. We don't even respond. We react out of fear to different challenges in our lives. We don't deliver, deliberately offer thought. Instead, we let our thoughts drift in and out of our, our thinking and whatever is happening around us. Or we get caught up in the fearfulness. We get caught up in that hole, and that's not a nice place to be. It really isn't. So we use our thoughts and actions to try to force something to happen. And we have to fix, 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 without going within and getting centered and doing it from a place of responding calmly. Yeah, then you make your phone calls. You know, then you take your action, but not from that place of panic and fear. So when was the last time when you were in a challenge that you <clears throat> sat down and said, I'm going to do affirmative prayer. I'm going to do spiritual mind treatment. Because this is one of the tools we teach here in our foundations class. And it is so powerful. It works. Does it work? Uh, no one's a practitioner. He got a guitar. He didn't have a guitar. One appeared. It works. <laughs> I'm telling you, it works. <laughs> So when was the last time you used this in, 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 in dealing with challenges? Maybe it's meeting with your boss or dealing with, with life's issues, because remember I said, life happens. How are you responding to it? Do a treatment first. Or as Patty's gonna do a workshop this afternoon, do a bunch of affirmations like a mantra until you get yourself into that place of peace, because then you're putting that into the law. Because it doesn't hold on, the law doesn't hold on to the initial fear thought. You know, you put something really positive and easy and peaceful into it, and then it responds to that. It responds to the now, and it's always the now, remember that. It's <coughs> always the eternal now. So, instead of forcing situations, allow the power within to take over. A basketball in the hands in my hands, is worth about $19, <laughs> right? <laughs> a basketball in the hands of Michael Jordan is worth $33 million. A baseball in my hands is worth about $6. A baseball in Mark McGuire's hands is worth about $19 million. A golf club in my hands is pretty useless, but a golf club in Tiger Woods' hands 
is four championship games. A rod in my hand might keep away a wild animal, but a rod in Moses' hand parted the sea. A slingshot is a toy. In my hand, it's an absolute toy. But a slingshot in David's hand slayed a mighty giant. It became a weapon. Two fishes and five loaves of bread in the hands of myself would make a few fish sandwiches. <laughs> Two fish and five loaves of bread in Jesus' hand fed thousands. So whose hand are you putting your life in? Whose hand are you putting your life in? If it's just your human ego's left brain's hands of thinking, that way of, of, of being, you're not getting the full benefit of the power that's within you because there is an, an incredible power within you that is so expansive. So you find yourself trying to control and control situations and control and fix when if you let go and let go. That's why that phrase is so powerful, let go and let God. Because when you do that, that divine power within you takes over, completely takes over and handles the situation, stops the waterfalls in the wall. It does that, it's the power. We have the power of the universe at our disposal. If we but realize that, we keep reading it, but do we realize how powerful we are? Ernest Holmes wrote in Science of Mind, we are dealing with the same power that molds the planets and all that is upon them. And the limit of our ability to use this power is not in principle, but in our understanding of it, our use of it, our trust in it. To trust, I don't have to do this. Sit back, take a couple of breaths, go into prayer, affirmations, and let the power within you guide you. It's, it is amazing. It really works. It works. You have to try it. There's a power for good in the universe, and you can use it. Ernest Holmes used to start his radio show in the <coughs> 40s with that phrase. Now, Judge Thomas Troad said in his Edinburgh letter, uh, lectures, this is, the one, this is the book we are reading uh, in the Roots class, but he said this about power and force. If we realize this from the onset, we shall not undo our own work by endeavoring to force things. For this reason, when the Bible says that he who believeth shall not make haste, it is enunciating a great natural principle that success depends on our using and not opposing the universal law of growth. I love his law of growth. You know that we have all these, these laws that are, they're in operation whether we use, the law of electricity is there whether we use it or not. We have a law of growth. Let go and let the law of growth. You've got to let it in. Our mistake always eventually resolves themselves into distrusting this law of growth, he writes. Either we fancy we can hasten it by some exertion of our own and are thus, thus led into hurry and anxiety. Not to say sometimes into the employment of the wrong methods. Or else, he writes, we give up all hope and so deny the germinating power of the seed we have planted. The result in either case is the same, for in either case we are in effect forming a fresh spiritual prototype of an opposite character to our desire. So listen to these words, which therefore neutralizes the first, the first one formed and disintegrates it and absorbs it, the law is always the same, that our thought forms a spiritual prototype which, if left undisturbed, will reproduce itself in external circumstances. He's writing this in, in what, the late 
it doesn't make a difference because this has been going on since Socrates and Plato. This has been going on since the beginning of time. This knowledge, this is the secret in Kabbalah. This is the secret in all of the different um, traditions, the religious traditions, that there is a power for good that we can use. But it's not really taught. So it's taught in new thought. We can use this power. We co-create. We're using that which already, the substance which already exists. We're not creating the substance. We're using it. When we say we co-create with God, we're using that which is already present within each and every one of us. We've got to believe it. And we have to go within and tap into it. So if we don't, if we don't start resisting and freaking out from pure reaction, because that's reaction, that wasn't responding, that was reaction. The spiritual prototype, which is the idea, the thought, the desire. So the spiritual, we think a thought. And that goes right into the mind, the infinite mind of the divine. So that's what the spiritual prototype is. It's already formed. It's already formed in the mind of God. Are we allowing it in? Are we opening up and accepting this good that we've already planted? Or are we stopping it with our fear? Because that is what we do. Let, letting God in and working through us, not to us, but through us, through our lives, that's where we want to make our decisions from. That's where we want to form what we really desire in life and keep going back. It's those, and fear thoughts will keep coming up because thoughts never stop. They're always going on. But it's to realign ourselves, to bring ourselves back, to remember the truth of our being. You do not have to beg life for this good. It's already present. It is. Just like the sun is always shining. Think of that analogy. I love that analogy. The sun is always shining. You don't have to make the sun shine. You don't force the sun to shine. But you have the power. You have the power to create life-giving experiences in your life. And this is not only your own life. This is life living through you. God living through you. This, this power living through you, tap into it. And so this morning, I invite you to do that, to use the soul law, the soul power that's within each and every one of us. And to live life in peace. Ah, to live life in peace, how wonderful. And then we can give that away. But if we're not living in the peace, we can't give away peace. If we're not living in love, we can't give away love. If we're not living in well-being, we can't, we can't even show well-being. We, we just can't. So we have to be the, and we are the quality, but to tap in and to connect with it and to express it. And let God, let the power of God within you take care of all the efforts in your life. You don't have to force anything. And so, 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 so.